So, we're going to look at uh, John chapter 7, and I'll find it here is verse 1. We're going to read from verse 1 down to around about verse 19. Okay, so here we go. John chapter 1, sorry, John chapter 7, verse 1. Here we go. After this, Jesus went around in Galilee. He did not want to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders there were looking for a way to kill him. But when the Jewish festival of tabernacles was near, Jesus' brothers said to him, leave Galilee and go to Judea so that your disciples there may see the works that you do. No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. For even his own brothers did not believe in him. Therefore Jesus told them, My time is not here. For you at any time will do. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. You go to the festival. I'm not going up, at this, uh, up to this festival because my time has not yet fully come. After he had said this, he stayed in Galilee. However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. Now, at the festival, the Jewish leaders were watching for Jesus and asking, where is he? Among the crowds there was widespread whispering about him. Some said, he is a good man. Others replied, no, he deceives the people. But no one would say anything publicly about him for fear of the leaders. Not until halfway through the festival did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews there were amazed and asked, How did this man get such learning without having been taught? Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Whoever speaks on their own does so to gain personal glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false in him. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet not one of you keeps the law. Why are you trying to kill me? Father, as we speak these words and as I speak my words, Lord, let uh, the message of God come from me, Lord. Let us learn something from this passage in Jesus' name. What I'd like you to do first of all in this passage is to focus on the questions that people had in their minds about Jesus. Some of them are explicit, that is their direct questions, but others of them are implicit, that is they're kind of implied in what they were doing or saying. And I would suggest to you that many of these questions are still being asked either explicitly or implicitly today. They're the same sorts of questions that are being asked of Jesus. So let's go have a look at this. So first of all, at the start, um, here Jesus is in Galilee with his family, brothers, and um, he was there because the Jewish leaders were trying to kill him. But the Jewish festival of tabernacles was near. So people go to the temple because of this festival. And Jesus' brothers said to him, Look, why don't you leave Galilee and go to Judea so that your disciples there may see the works you do? Now there's an implied question in there. Why don't you do what everybody else ought to do? Or another question, that is, why don't you do what we think you ought to do, Jesus? I mean, after all, we know what's good and 
maybe you don't know what you ought to be doing, so why don't you just do what we want you to do? And there are other questions here that go through. So uh, we got there and they're saying first an explicit question. Where is he? Where's this Jesus? They're looking for him. Where is he physically? And some are saying he's a good man. Some are saying, no, nah, no. Nah. Now the question is, is Jesus a good man? Is he fair dinkum? Is he someone we ought to follow? Or is he something, somebody we ought to ignore? These are the questions that are coming out of, out of people's mouths. And it says that no one dared speak of him for fear of the leaders, verse 13. Now there's an implied question in that. If I speak of Jesus, will my reputation be tarnished? Will others think poorly of me? See, no one would say anything publicly about him for fear of the leaders. So if I say something publicly about Jesus, will I be thought poorly of, in this case, by the leaders? In our case today, other people. So all of these questions, these people didn't know. And there's also a bit of the question of implied, why all the secrecy? Why all the mystery? Why doesn't he come out and just, you know, here I am, Jesus, your saviour. Why didn't he do that? Why didn't he come out into the temple straight away and say, here I am? Why all the mystery? Why all the secrecy about what he's doing? And, by the way, didn't this guy grow up on the shores of Galilee? He's just a nobody, isn't he? How come he gets to know all this stuff when no one's ever taught him? Where, where's all that coming from? You know, does he, is he making this stuff up himself? If he hasn't been taught, then he must have made it up himself, surely. That is, is he believable? Is he someone that you can put your life into, that you can trust? Now, I would say to you that these are the same sort of questions that people ask about Jesus today. Where is he? Where's this Jesus? I haven't seen him lately. You know, look at all the wars. Look at all of the, the terrible things going on in the world. He can't be around here, surely. Where is he? And can... Can you believe this? Can you believe his teachings? Hmm, don't know. Was Jesus a good man or was he not? Did he do good things? Implied in that is, was he the son of God? Was he who he was? Who he said he was? All of these questions that people have got in their minds about Jesus. And people ask questions. They have these implied questions. Even if you watch things like, um, from time to time, who knows about the show Q&A? It's on the ABC, Q&A. Yeah, some, some watch it. Um, and often they will have a, mm, what, I'll, what I'll call a, a, a religious slant to it. Uh, not that I've watched it a lot of late, but they'll, they'll introduce some question about Christianity or, or, or um, you know, say, uh, science and Christianity or, say, um, uh, homosexuality and Christianity or something like that, something controversial. But what's behind it is these questions. Was Jesus fair dinkum? Was Jesus the real thing? Where is he now? Can you believe in him? Is he you know, the, the, the full bottle. Hmm? These are the questions that are being asked. And they're asked of us, and they're asked in the world, and they're asked in the papers, and they want to know, is Jesus real? Now, Jesus 
in this passage gives a surprising answer that covers just about all of those questions. And it's quite a surprising answer and it's quite a... Um, um, it's quite a deep answer, but it's also something that, that only very few people, in fact, probably him, uh, yes, well, him, he is the only person who possibly could say such a thing. So, and, you know, people want to know, how can I know whether Jesus is the real deal? How can I know that this is right or wrong? Well, Jesus gives us a hint at this here. Verse 15, the Jews were amazed and asked, how did this man get such learning without having been taught? Now, that's encompassing a lot of those questions and here is the answer that Jesus gave. I want you to listen to this carefully because it's quite a significant and deep thing to say. My teaching is not my own. So the first thing is he's trying to rebut the idea that he made this stuff up by himself. See, he hasn't been taught. Everybody knows that. So if he hasn't been taught, where did he get it from? Implication, he made it up himself. But Jesus is saying, my teaching didn't come from me. I didn't make this up myself. It comes from the one who sent me. And then he says this, anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Whoever speaks on their own does so to gain personal glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Anyone who chooses, and note the word choose, anyone who chooses to do the will of God, it's a choice, will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Now that is a, you think about the depth of that statement and how uh, proud that would be, say, for someone to say something like that if it were not true. Jesus is saying, if you choose to do the will of God, then you're going to find out that what I'm saying is right. You're going to find out that I am the real deal. You're going to find out that what I say is a good thing and living for me is a good thing if you simply choose to do the will of God. Now that response we can give to the people of our day. And you see, this is the paradox of faith. So you see, our world, we have been taught to think in the scientific method. That is, prove it to me and then I'll believe it. Give me one, two, three, four, and then, yes, I'll get it. Because that's science, and science is God, and uh, you know that's what we all should think like. But faith doesn't work like that. God says, you believe in me first, and then I'll prove it, that you're right. And this is what Jesus is saying here. You choose. You make a choice. You make a personal decision to say, I want to follow God. I want to do what is God's will. And when I make that choice, then by a self-fulfilling mechanism, for want of a better word, you will know that what Jesus is saying is right. But the trouble is that people want it round the other way. They want to say, well... Prove me all of this stuff is right and then I'll believe in God. Uh-uh, doesn't work that way. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
you must first say, yes, I want to do God's will. Whatever that is, I will do that thing. And if I do it, according to Jesus, if you do that, you'll then find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I'm speaking on my own. Now just imagine if that was being said by a politician. Vote for me and you will know once I'm in office that everything I'm promising you is absolutely true. They might say it, but you wouldn't. You think, oh, yes. <laughs> or have you picked up, um, I don't know, a packet of cereal? It says if you eat this cereal, you'll look like, you know, super somebody. <laughs> or if you buy this motor vehicle, all of the girls will notice you going by. <laughs> it's the same idea. Buy this product, have this thing, vote for me, do that thing, and the promises that are in that product will be yours. And we say, <laughs> because we've had the experience. You know, sometimes they're right, many times they're not. But here is the Son of God saying, you do the will of God and you will find out whether what I am saying is of God. You choose to do the will of God and you will know it will be self-proving. It will have a self-fulfilling I was going to use the word prophecy, but a self-fulfilling mechanism in there that if you do it, then you will know that what I am saying is true. And I can say that in my life, that has been the case. A lot of people start on the path with Jesus and they think it's a good idea, but they haven't sort of got the whole thing in place. I don't know whether everybody does when they do, when they, when they start along the path. But as you go along the path, more and more and more, you start to realise, man, this is true. This is right. This is good. I'm following God's will and now I know that what Jesus is saying to me is good, is true. But it takes faith. You see, the faith must come before the proof. It's not the other way round. And that's the paradox of faith. And our scientific Western mind says, no, I want the proof and then I'll have the faith. It doesn't work that way. You have the faith and then you get the proof. That's the way faith works. And you can think of things of Jesus' teachings. You know, if you decide that you will love your enemies... Will your life be better off if you decided to do that? If you decide to love your enemies, will you live a better life? Yes, you will. Yeah? Because the angst isn't there the <clears throat> that you feel against the person. If you decide to forgive, as Jesus said, will that make you, give you a better life, a happier life? A freer life? Yes, it will. And so there is a self-fulfilling mechanism in what Jesus says. He said, just do the things, decide to do what God wants to do, and it will be proven that what I am saying is coming from God. So, when people come to you with questions... And there's a lot of questions that we can't answer. You know, where's Jesus and all that sort of thing. And people have got scientific things and this and the way, this way and that way. One of the things that we can say to them is, look, if you choose to do the will of God, if you say in your heart, that's what I really want, I want to do what God wants, I mightn't understand it all, but that's what I really want to do, 
then I can promise you that the teachings of Jesus will become real to you and they will improve your life. That's what Jesus is saying here. Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Now that is a major and significant statement and only a man of great truth could ever make such a statement. Because we laugh when politicians say it. We laugh about it on, on packets of cereal and so forth. But when Jesus says it, he's saying, that's what's backing me up. You doubt me? You got questions? You don't know why things happen the way they are? Okay. Understand that. But just choose to do the will of God and then you will know that what I'm saying is true. It's got a self-fulfilling mechanism within it. And that's all I want to say this morning. Ah, good. <laughs> so, Father, we do ask. We will say at this time, we choose to do the will of God. Whatever that is, we choose that path. We want that path. Do we know everything about it? No, but you do. But we just say in faith, we want to choose that path. And we know, Lord, that in doing that, we can read these words and say, that is a better life. That is a better way to live. And we know, Lord, through experience, through the self-fulfilling mechanism that is in the truth of Jesus' words, that we have lived better lives because we have chosen to do that and will continue to do so, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you give us a good path ahead in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So there we are, folks. Thank you for coming.